Well, on this first video, academic or character building video, I wanted to invite you to join us, join the teachers in working with your children on how to develop good character. But I'll give you a couple tips at the beginning of the year uh, you might find very helpful. Now, when we talk about character, what we're talking about is the accumulation of habituated virtues. So when we grow up, we all habituate behaviors and that collection of all the different behaviors that have been habituated become who we are. So when we're talking about character education, we're talking about making a deliberate impact on that process, creating experiences that good habits can be built up. So we parents and teachers can have an impact. We, we can't totally shape children, we know that, but we can make a meaningful impact on the type of person that they are by helping them habituate good virtues. Now, when I use the word virtue, I know in some people's mind, it's an old fashioned term, but actually it's derived directly from the Greek language. Uh, the word is arete. And what it meant was excellencies, um, beautiful conduct, um, uh, praiseworthy, honorable, um, admirable. When you see that behavior in a person, whether they are highly successful in their life or they're not, no matter what kind of job they have, no matter what, what kind of intelligence, intelligence they have, when you see virtuous behavior, you say, wow, that's a great person. I like using the word great because it takes it out of the realm of just people who make a lot of money or just people who are highly successful in their profession, but may not have admirable character. Um, and that, so virtue, when we're cultivating virtue, we're cultivating the habits that make our children beautiful people, admirable, admirable people, people that uh, um, we could easily uh, honor and respect. Now, here's the, the other point. In order to habituate virtue, you've got to practice it until it becomes a habit. Uh, many, many, many institutions, schools, uh, um, sporting uh, institutions talk about good character. But just to uh, admonish children to behave right is not going to make it happen. It does. In, in some cases, I think sports and music are excellent examples because you're almost forced to practice certain kinds of virtuous behavior. But in general, especially when it occurs in schools, it's talk, but there's no practical access. How do you make that a habit? And that's central to what we do in Birchwood. When we define um, any kind of virtue that leads to the development of character, we also define the kinds of practices that need to be set in place, whether at home, or whether it's school, um, so that you practice, you get better, and it becomes a habit. Um, the first one I'm going to bring up that I think it's helpful at the start of the year is the virtue of courage. Now, I know generally we all have an idea of courage, and we think about um, outstanding military leaders and outstanding statesmen, people of uh, social activism who have given their life for positions on civil justice, things like that. And that certainly is all a part of courage. But again, you run into the problem. How do you teach that? How do you habituate that? Many of those things happen. Those people rise to the occasion um, because it's that occasion. You, you can't really look back and say how that got built up. So here's how we define courage. Courage is any time you have a goal or a challenge or a problem that you've got to attack, you've got to go after. However, the solution or the answer, or the pathway to achievement always includes some level of price that has to be paid. Some sacrifice has to be made. And it's the fact that you go after that goal or after that challenge, knowing the price you have to pay, and then you pay it. Time, energy, organization of your life, um, you pay the price. And because you pay the price, you get the achievement. That's courage that can be habituated. I hope you can see them with little children now. They can learn. School has started. Uh, things as simple as be ready to go and mom and dad get to the car. Uh, that's a, that's a, a genuine goal. And okay, so the night before we have to talk through it, what do you have to do? Well, you can't linger. You can't play games. Um, 
Number one, you have to do this. And number two, you have to do that. You always want to make it manageable. And they show up the next morning, or at least you hope it, it takes a while to create these kind of good habits. Um, and as soon as they've got everything ready, you can say, wow, that what you did, you, you sacrificed your time or your usual bad habits in order to be here on time. Same thing with reading or language arts. Small, it's what we do in school all the time. Small incremental challenges, which requires some level of sacrifice, focusing. And immediately when the children succeed, when they meet the challenge, when they overcome the problem, that's when we heap praise on them. That was, that was brave. That was courageous because you had to give up time or give up um, playing with your friends in order that you would get better at something. When the children play sports, it's very vivid. You want to be a better soccer player. You want to be a better baseball player. Then you put in time. You put in extra practice. And every little increment is a demonstration of, in, increment of growth is a demonstration of your courage. The language is important. And I'll come back to that in a second. With eighth grade, seventh and eighth grade students, as they get older, you know, they're thinking about the high school they want to go to. There are even, many of them are thinking about the uh, course tracks that they will follow. So we talk about it. Where would you like to be in June in math or in writing or what kind of a reader? Where do you see your weaknesses that you need to attack? Or where do you see your strengths that you want to build on? Think about it. Then what's the price you have to pay? You may have to sacrifice your social media times. You may have to sacrifice some of your gaming times. And a little side note on that, I, I'm coming to the conclusion, we're not gonna be able to stop social media or gaming. That's, it's just a part of the kid's culture, but they can learn to manage their time. So it doesn't usurp their entire waking hours. So we, we look and talk with the children related to sports, related to music, related to their academic programming. Where do you wanna be? What do you wanna play, et cetera? Now, what's the price? What is the price you have to pay to get there? And they've got to think through it. Oftentimes they have goals and they're unrelated to reality. So they have no plan in place to establish where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to get better, or to face difficulties that you have requires a plan. And embedded in that plan is sacrifice. And the more children grow up owning that realization, if I want to get better, I've got to put the time in. I've got to put the work in. I've got to have some level of sacrifice so that I can attain my goal. Now you're training them how to be courageous, how to face things, how, not to, um, how to measure what's going to be exacted from me if I want to reach that goal. And then I'm willing, let's go. And so in a, in a very concrete way, we, we don't know maybe if they're a military leader someday or a statesman, they'll have another set of challenges, but they're learning as a human being, no matter what walk of life they have, requires courage. And that courage can drive them forward to their goals, to face their problems and face all their challenges. When they achieve anything through this process, wow, you've got to be their cheerleader. We call this part of our success cycle. You have to reinforce with language. That, that was brave. That took courage. You had to sacrifice. You had to give something up. You had to pay a price. I'm proud of you. This last step of, of praising them for what they have done and emphasizing the effort that went in, not just the idea of having some courage, but the price that was paid and they made it. And that reinforcement and practice over and over and over again habituates and makes uh, courage something that you can work at and practice until it becomes your habit. Okay. I hope that's helpful. Uh, go somewhere with your son or daughter, go get some Coca-Cola or an ice cream cone and talk, talk about the goals for this year and talk about how they're going to get there and what price it will take. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day.